Hello and welcome back to our VR beginner series, where we're going to be continuing the work on our grabbable object where we're going to be able to shoot projectiles. In the last video we kind of got our asset imported and started setting everything up, but it's not perfect just yet. So in this video we're going to be smoothing out some of those issues and actually writing the code for firing a projectile. So let's get started. Now if you remember from the last video when I tested my weapon it really wasn't the correct scale and it wasn't properly oriented with the hand. So I think those are the two biggest things we need to tackle first. So let's make our weapon a little bit smaller. Let's select our revolver and I'm just going to go to the mesh asset here. And I'm going to go our scale factor and instead of 25 I think I'm going to do 15. I think that sounds good. And we'll hit apply. And then let's double click it to see if we can zoom in. And we didn't get shot out to the stratosphere. So that's already vote one for zooming in. Now, if you notice, because we made our mesh a little bit smaller, our box collider is a little bit too big now. And one way to fix that is if we go to these three dots here on our box collider, we can click that and we can hit reset. And that'll automatically reset up our box collider for us. And now let's add a custom attach point so we can make sure that our revolver is orienting correctly with the hand. So we're going to go into our prefab edit mode. Well, actually, <laughs> And you'll notice that our collider changes haven't carried over, so let's go back in there and we'll apply those changes. There we go. Now let's go back into our revolver. And there, now it looks good. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating an empty game object for our attach point. And our interactor is going to be using this to apply a bit of either a positional or rotational offset to make the weapon a little bit more comfortable when the user's holding it. So let's right click, we'll create an empty game object, and we'll just call this attach. And before we get to orienting it or anything, let's set it in our XR grabbable here, because I know I'm going to forget it. So we'll just click and drag and we'll drop it in there. And one thing you'll notice as we sort of look at our weapon here, if I double check to make sure that I'm in pivot mode, as well as our local transform, you'll see that the blue axis is currently up. And if you're familiar with directions in Unity, Y is going to be up, which is going to be the green axis. Forward is going to be Z, which is going to be the blue, and right is going to be the red X axis here. And obviously this doesn't look right, seeing as that our forward axis on the pivot point of the mesh that we imported is, our forward is actually up. So we need to use our attach point to counteract this a little bit. Because if we select that, you'll see that it's in the same orientation. Luckily the pivot's in the right place, we just need to account for the difference in orientation. So let's make sure that our blue axis is going forward first. I'm going to go to the rotation tool. I'm going to hold control so it snaps. And I'm going to look in the upper right hand corner to see the Y rotation go to 90 degrees. There we go. And then if we just go back to the move tool, you'll see that our blue axis is now forward. Now let's make sure that our green axis is up. So let's hit E again. Let's hold control. And we'll make sure our Z is in the 90 as well. Okay, cool. So that looks good. Now you may want to test it at this point to see if it works for you, but if it doesn't, sometimes you need to update the pitch a little bit, which is going to be that Y rotation. And since I'm using a Vive controller, I know that I'm going to need to change my rotation a little bit differently. So I'm going to rotate it in the up by 45. So you'll see that my blue axis is now sort of facing at a 45 degree angle. And once we're done, we'll test this in engine really quick. But what we're going to do now is create an empty game object for our projectiles to be spawned at and use that for its direction. So what we're going to do is we can actually just duplicate this attach point by selecting the game object and hitting control D. And then I'm going to hit F2 to rename it. And I'm just going to name this barrel. And then we're actually going to return that Y rotation to negative 90. And this is going to be very important for making sure that our projectiles are going in the right direction. But what we need to do now is raise it up a little bit and get it to sort of the front of our weapon here. Okay. And that looks, that's actually pretty good surprisingly. We just eyeballed it. Let's just make these some simpler numbers. Maybe we'll do seven there, that's a little bit too much. Let's do six, seven, that looks good. Yep, that's close enough. One thing to take note of is based on the size of our projectiles, we do want to make sure that it's far away enough from our collider on our weapon to make sure that when it gets created, it's not going to accidentally intersect with it. So let's see. That looks okay. That looks far enough away. All right. So let's go back into our main scene and let's just make sure this works really quick. So let's hit play. All 
All right, and everything looks to be working pretty well. Now we're gonna do two more things before we actually get to writing some code. So what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at our movement type as well as our colliders on our weapon itself. Now for our movement type, we have three to choose from. We have velocity tracking, we have kinematic, and we have instantaneous. I honestly can't remember if I went over these in too much detail earlier, but they each have their uses and their pluses and their minuses. For our velocity tracking, this is going to ensure that our weapon respects all the colliders in a scene. So while we're holding the object and we push it against the floor or the wall or a different physical object, we're not going to be able to push the weapon through that geometry. What we can also do, which we'll actually be doing in this video, is also applying a force to this weapon so we can give it a little bit of recoil. And then similarly, we also have kinematic, where unlike velocity tracking, this doesn't really respect any static colliders within your scene. This is primarily going to be able to be able to grab your object and then use it to knock other objects that have rigid bodies in your scene. But because it's kinematic, we can't apply any additional forces to it like we would for recoil or something like that. And then finally, we have instantaneous, where this is going to be the simplest of the three, where this is pretty much just, it's just going to set the transform of it. So it's just going to intersect with any geometry and it's not going to react with anything in the world. Now, depending upon your project or how you like your game to feel, I would recommend experimenting with each of these and seeing what you want it to do. But for me, I know I'm going to use velocity tracking, so I'm going to stick to that right now. And for the time being, I'd say just follow along just to be sure that you can get it working and then experiment a little bit because with the attach point, you may get differing results if you use instantaneous. So we'll stick with velocity tracking for right now. And then another thing to note is our colliders here. Now, as you can see right now, our size is going to be zero, but when our project starts, it's going to look for any colliders on the game object. So that means as soon as our scene starts, it's going to get this box collider here. Now, what this list actually does, if we read the tooltip here, it says colliders to use for interaction. If empty, we'll use any child colliders. And this nifty thing does is any colliders that are either on that game object itself or any of its children, that's what it's going to use to check for any interactors within the scene. And an actual use case of this would be, let's say, instead of our entire object having this box collider that we're using for the interaction, let's say we just wanted one on the handle here. And what we could do is we could create a new 3D object. We'll create a cube really quick. Obviously, it's very big. So let's shrink it down a little bit. And let's just disable the mesh render so we can see it a bit better. Now, anytime if you wanted the user to specifically grab the handle to be able to pick up the weapon, we would use this collider. And all we would need to do is drop this collider into the list. And because we set that collider there, it's actually not going to look for this box collider when the project starts. But we're going to keep it simple. So we're just going to leave it the way it is right now. So we'll just delete that. And there we go. All right, now that we have that out of the way, let's actually create our projectile. And what we're going to do is we'll just do it in our main scene here. So let's just create a sphere really quick. And let's just scale it down to 0.01 all across the board. So it's actually quite small now. And we can see it lined up to our weapon here. Let's see how that looks. That looks to be a decent enough size. Now, instead of using the mesh render on it right now, we're actually going to use a trail render so we can get a bit of a tracer effect. So let's remove this. And we'll also remove our mesh renderer and our filter. And we'll also need to add a rigid body to this. So let's add that. And we'll actually need our projectile script to call some functionality on this. So let's create a new script that we'll call projectile. And we'll grab our sphere again. We'll drag that projectile script on it and we'll just call this projectile. And we won't create a new prefab just yet. We need to add our trail. So let's create a child object because sometimes when I'm dealing with particles or trails or anything, I like to put it on a sub object. So we'll put a trail there and then we'll just add a trail render. There we go. And if you move it around in your scene, uh, we got a really big trail here for such a small object. So we're going to need to set up some settings on this. So let's first start with our width here. And I think our max width, we'll just see if we can make it the same size as our sphere. So it's 0 0.01, so that looks pretty good. And we also want it to be a little bit, we want it to trail off or get smaller as our projectile moves. So we can add a key here and we can actually hit edit key to get very specific with this. 
So we'll put one and we'll give it a value of zero. There we go. And then I just want this to be a linear, just a straight shot. So we'll just do, but I think we'll just move our handles to get it to a pretty straight line, I think. I think that's, that looks close enough. There we go. We're then gonna change the time for how long our trail is going to exist. So we'll do 0 0.25, and then we're actually going to need a material for this because as you can see, as we move it around, we're just gonna get this, that oh so familiar magenta color. So let's create a new material. And we'll just call this unlit white. Make it unlit color. And there we go, that's good enough. And we'll just click and drag that onto our line or our trail. All right, that looks pretty good. But also instead of having this sort of flat top that's going on, let's go to our end cap vertices and we'll add one. So that should give it a little bit more of a diamond effect there. And if we want, we can maybe even smooth it out even more and maybe do three. And you can see we have actually more of a curve. So let's actually leave it at three. All right, so now that our projectile is all good in terms of the prefab, let's create it. So let's drag it into our prefabs folder and that looks good. Let's now delete it out of our scene. Let's close all of our folders. And now let's actually edit our projectile in our weapon script. All right, and here we are within our projectile script. Where the first thing that we're gonna do is get rid of these two functions since we're not gonna be needing them. And we're gonna have two variables. We're gonna have one for our launch force and another for our rigid body. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is create that launch force. And we're just gonna initialize that to a value of 10. And then we'll create a private rigid body that we're then just going to set up in an awake function. So say private void awake, our, get our rigid body, and we'll just say get component. So this is pretty simple. And then we'll need to just create one function that we're just gonna call launch that's gonna be called within that fire function we created in the last video. So we'll say public void launch. And we're just gonna be doing two things in our launch function. We're gonna be applying a relative force to that rigid body that we're getting. And then we're also going to create a timer that's going to destroy this projectile within five seconds. And yes, we're not gonna be using object pooling. We're just gonna keep it really simple. If you wanna take this project a bit further, that would probably be one of the first things that you would do. So let's get our rigid body. We'll say add relative force, where this is just gonna let us apply a force in its sort of local space. So we don't need to pass the barrel in and use its forward or anything like that. When we create the projectile, as long as it's aligned with the barrel and we apply a force in the forward direction, we'll be okay. So we'll say add relative force. We'll say vector three dot forward. We'll multiply that forward direction by our launch force. And our force mode is just going to be impulse, which I believe it's that by default, but let's just be explicit about it. Next, we just want to call destroy. Well, we'll be passing in the scheme object. And then we actually have another argument here for a time. And I'm just gonna put in five seconds. So after five seconds, this object will destroy itself. So our scene isn't gonna be filled with a bunch of dead projectiles that aren't gonna do anything. But believe it or not, that's actually it for our projectile script. So let's go into our weapon now, where we're going to be creating two new variables and a function for creating our projectile. So we first need a reference to our barrel, which is going to be that empty game object that we put on our prefab a little bit earlier on. We'll just call it barrel. And then we'll just create another public variable for our game object. And this is just gonna be our projectile prefab. And then we'll just move on down here to create our new function. And we'll just call this create projectile. Imagine that. Where the first thing we'll need to do is actually use that prefab to create our projectile. So we'll just call the object we're going to be creating projectile object because we're going to need to be reusing it to get that projectile component off of it so we can call our launch function. So we'll first call instantiate. We'll pass in our little projectile prefab. And then we need to give it a position and a rotation. And this is where that barrel is going to come into play, where we're going to say, we want you to instantiate yourself at the barrel's position. And we also want to use its rotation. 
there we go. And then let's just get a reference to the projectile component that's on this object. So let's say our projectile object, get component projectile, there we go. Now all we need to do is use that final reference of our projectile component and call launch. And there we go. Now all we have to do now is within our fire function, let's just call create projectile. And there we go. And now let's go back into Unity so we can set up those public variables. All right, so now that we're back in Unity, let's go to our revolver. We'll click and drag our barrel down to our barrel here. And then we'll grab our projectile and drag it down to our projectile prefab here. And before we do that, let's double check our projectile to make sure it's all good and ready to go. So the scale looks good, the collider looks good, we have a rigid body, our projectile script with a launch force. And if we look at our trail, that all looks good too, except for our position here. That doesn't look like it got centered out. So let's fix that. There we go. So let's go back into our main scene. We'll hit save. Now let's hit play and hopefully this works. All right, and we can pick up our weapon. Looks like it's oriented correctly. And then when we pull the trigger, it'll create a projectile. So everything looks like it's working pretty well. And I think that about does it for me and this video. In the next one, I think we'll actually be finishing up the project by applying our recoil as well as creating a target for us to shoot at. But that's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.